Hi, welcome to Bootstrap Algebra, um, Lesson 5, Function Composition. So let's um, remind ourselves where we were last time. Go to Courses, Algebra, Latest Version. And last time we talked about um, domain and range. So um, if you remember, those are, are terms from algebra that we also can use in the Wii Scheme um, language to talk about the domain, which is what goes into a function, the set of things that can go into a function, and a range, the set of things that can come out of a function. And um, those are data types, so not specific values like 3 or 7, but a data type like a number. We um, talked about the algebra definition for a function and the vertical line test that we, we learned in algebra, pre-algebra. Um, we got introduced to the We Scheme um, function contract for the first time. You had a lot of practice writing contracts. We also got to branch out. Instead of just these um, numeric functions, we also learned about uh, image functions. So we talked about star, and you discovered several functions on your own. You got more practice with circles of evaluation and practice with some image type functions. Um, yeah, so that's where we were last time. And now we're going to talk about, let's go back. We'll be on function composition. So uh, if you remember from algebra, composition is a term that you learned in algebra where we take the output of one function and put it directly as the input to another function. So we can compose functions by um, taking the output of one and become the input of another. So that's what we'll see, some really practical uses of that in the Wii Scheme language. We're going to start with a warm-up exercise. So... Uh, let's open the fun some function cards. So in your um, PDF, or um, if you click on the uh, function cards link here in the material section, you have these cards. So go ahead and cut those out. Cut those out just like you would. Uh, uh, and we're going to use them. This is this little. Um, cards in these shapes and notice that you have um, uh, contracts on these so like double it takes a number produces a number that is twice as big so for this double function if we put in a four we would get out an eight half does the opposite add five what do you think that does well it takes in a number returns a number and uh, it adds five sub ten so subs or subtract Square takes a number, squares it, which you remember is multiplying a number by itself. So we put in a 4 and multiply it by itself. We get 16. Neg, so it takes a number and multiplies by negative 1. So if we put in a 7, we get a negative 7. If we put in a negative 4, we get a positive 4. Add 6, sub 6, add 1, sub 1. All right, so we're going to have all of those cards representing functions that we could use. And then, so say, um, if we started with the number 4, we can play the add 1 card. So just to remember, let's go find the add 1 card. Takes a number, and as you guess, adds 1, produces the next result, and we'd get a 5. So what card would we play to turn it into a 10? I guess we mean it the 5. Well, if we already have a 5, uh, we would play to turn that into a 10 double because we take in a 5 and get out a 10. So now what you do when I um, tell you to, to pause the video is you um, start from these numbers on the left and see what card you would play to get with the 26 to get it to, to get the uh, the number on the right and there could be more than one way to do it. So um, with the card you have there could be many ways to do it. Um, so go ahead and pause the video and um, work through these three 
with your cards where you start with the number on the left, figure out what card you need to play to get the number on the right. Don't reuse a card. See if you can get it without reusing any cards. Like, you know, we're not going to do uh, add one, add one, add one, add one to get up to 26. So just with the cards you have, see what you can, uh, what cards you can play to go from the number on the left to the number on the right. Go ahead and pause now to do that. Good. Hopefully you had fun doing that warm-up exercise. You're going to get to do some more also. Uh, let's open up page 19, Composing Functions. Page 19, Composing Image Functions. You'll see what it has. It has some contracts at the top. Um, some of these you've seen before. Some of them you may not, but you can guess what they do based on their name and what they uh, take in. Um, and then you have some instructions on what they want you to do, like make your name in big purple letters. What function would you use to do that? Go ahead and you can, um, on WeScheme, if you need to test something, like my name in purple letters. If I don't remember, let's look back at the contract. Text takes in a string, a number, and a string. Well, if I don't remember exactly what those do, I can rely on the error message to say um, text. Hi, or well, let's do my name. And a number, but then I don't remember what this one does. Let's just give it that. Uh, expect a color as the third argument. I'm going to do Alt up arrow to bring that back. And let's just try purple. Yes. Okay. So you can experiment with the um, with a Wii scheme ripple if you want to. All right. So go ahead and pause now and do the um, exercises on page 19. Great. Um, hopefully you had fun doing that, drawing out what you're going to get with those. All right, so now um, let's look at some things we, we, we learned um, in, in doing those exercises. What do these functions all have in common? So let's look at these and we can see, well, one thing that really jumps out, and you can tell it clearly from the contracts, is they all produce images. Did you notice that? These are all image functions, even though they take in different types of things. They all produce images. What does the number in the scale represent? So let's take my image. I'm going to do Alt up. So there's that. The number in the scale. Scale. And uh, let's go back to this number, image, image. So number, I'm going to do 1. We see this number 10, Tim, the size of that. And I still need another paren. Okay, it's the same size. So the number in the scale represents how much of this image, so remember that this represents an image because that's what comes out of text, how big it's going to be. So we can say, all right, if we get it higher, like a 2, we would expect it to be twice as big, right? Yep. If we give it a decimal number, like 0 0.5, we expect it to be half. So here's the original, here's half. So the scale number tells us how we're going to multiply um, the size of this image by that scale. So if it's two, it's going to be twice as big. If it was three, it would be three times as big. If it's a half, then it's going to be half as big. What does the number in rotate represent? Let me go back up. There, Alt up. Let's get just our base thing back. I'm going to go to the beginning and put rotate. And what's the signature for the uh, contract for rotate? Number, image, image. All right. 
going to make a guess and put the number 90 in here. So I have a guess as to what it means. Yes. So, um, you know, in, remember in algebra, a lot of times we consider a circle to be 360 degrees. So that means if we put in 360, it's going to look exactly the same as the original, right? 360. Yes. So here's the original. And here was the rotate 360. Looks exactly the same, right? Even though this did something. All right. If we wanted to go upside down, what's half of 360? 180. There it is upside down. So 90 rotated it. That would be what? Counterclockwise. So what if we did negative 90, which if you remember is the same as 270. It goes clockwise. So rotate is going to be the number is going to mean degrees. Can you compose the same function twice? Well, let's try it. Uh, let's take, I'm going to do alt up arrow. Let's go back to the 90. So if I remember, 90 gave that. Let's do a 90 rotation again. Because this is, has an image out, right? So let's double check. Rotate gives us an image out. And so we see this is the image that came out. So I'm going to rotate our, and then do a 90 again. Close that up. What do you think is going to happen? It's upside down because we rotated, we had the original image, which is like this, and we rotated it 90, which gave us that. We rotated it again, and we expect, since we did 290 rotations, we did 180. So, yep, it looks like we can do that. We can run at least some functions we can run twice. All right, let's just guess what's this going to produce. Scale 3, star solid, uh, star 50, solid red. So I'll start from the inside. Well, a star 50 solid red is going to be a star that's going to be size 50, which is not too big. And scale 3 is going to make it three times bigger, right? So star 50, solid red. All right. And alt up. And I'm going to do what it tells us to do. Scale three. Scale three. I would expect a much bigger star. Yep. What's a different line of code could produce the exact same image? So exact same image. Well, um, we could play with these numbers here. Let's see, if I had um, a star that was only 25, so it's much smaller, but I want to make this size. So that was half of that. So instead of going half, I need to go twice, double, right? So what if we did scale of six? of six. So we went half on the star size and we're doing twice double on this uh, scale size. And yes, that is the same size star as that. Is it? For some reason it looks a little smaller. Let's see if we think it's the same. Okay, no, it's the same. That was just the, the way that Looked on that first, when I scrolled it up, it looked different, but those two are the same size. Flip horizontal takes an image and produces an image. How do I know that I can use the text function as an input for flip horizontal? 
All right, and I know that based on the contract. That's one reason we call it a contract, is because it's something that um, the computer is going to ensure that happens. Just like a legal contract in society, that's something we all agree on, but it's also something that is enforceable, and that's what the computer does, is it enforces the contract. And I know, based on this contract, that the text function will always give me an image output, because that's the contract. And I know that, what did they ask us about? Flip horizontal. Flip horizontal is going to take an image in. So I know that I can use the text uh, function as input to the flip horizontal because of the contracts. All right, with the function at cards activity, um, you started and ended with a number to think about what function you would get from to go from A to B. We do the same thing with images. So you can get a starting image and a desired ending image and figure out what functions will you take you to get from A to B. And hopefully you can see how this is going to play into our game because at any one part of our game, we're going to have um, you know, an image that represents the current state of the game and we're going to want something to happen. We're going to want our player to jump, our player to duck, um, uh, our uh, target to move. All of those things are going to happen sometime in the future. And we're going to have to figure what functions do we need to get from one state to another state. So this is just kind of the first simple step in that direction. All right, and this is what you are going to do. So this will be your homework. You've already put in a lot of time today. so. Do this later or tomorrow. Let's open up page 20 called Function Composition. And it has, just like it said, it's going to have um, some, some uh, image input. And then it wants you to describe or write the functions of how you uh, get to some desired output. So go ahead, um, as is the homework, draw the circles of evaluation and the code. But now that you already know how to get to the code, you can take it a step further and check your code and see if you really get the desired output. So after you um, draw the circles of evaluation and take that into code, then go ahead and type that into WeScheme and see if you really get what you think, uh, what, what the desired output. Um, we're going to, um, just in, in the next uh, couple of lessons, um, we'll quit um, using circles of evaluation. You'll be able to, to, to just think in your brain how you get from one state to another. Um, but for right now, uh, we want to, so, so that way we can see um, if you've uh, made a mistake in how you're thinking about it. Circle of evaluation will help your partner uh, understand uh, and also help you understand um, uh, something that you might be missing. So circle of evaluation is a tool that we're only going to use for a few more lessons, uh, and then we won't have to use that as part of the homework anymore. So. Let's let me make sure that I think that was our last slide. So, yep, that's going to be your homework. And then also um, for homework, go ahead and do this challenge, which is create, create an image that uses the text function and at least three of the following functions. So go ahead and take a picture of this screen right now so that you can um, see this additional uh, homework to do uh, to try to, to uh, create an image that uses at least three of these guys and see what that looks like. So two parts to your homework. Let's uh, do our review. So none of these um, terms were new. You've already had all of these terms, and we talked about uh, all of these. We didn't specifically remember, uh, remind, but the definitions area in WeScheme and the interactions area, or the REPL. We had slides on all of these. You did the, um, the cards. You did a lot of uh, image problems. Uh, during the you do section. Oh, okay, so um, here's the little challenge challenge part in addition to um, practice on page 20. Here's the little challenge so you, didn't, you don't have to take a picture. Um, 
and just uh, yeah, practice um, some more with these image functions. So that'll be the homework for this lesson. Thanks.